<laughs> well, I think Jeff said it best. I don't think there's ever been a season where we've had this much competitiveness and camaraderie between everyone. We've definitely seen seasons to rival it in terms of compatibility, HVV, and Triple H, but in terms of the camaraderie... I don't know. Uh, one world, maybe? Just, yeah. This season's cast, they'll just point moves on each other, and yet they aren't that bothered by it. And it's just crazy what's going on here, especially Mike, because... <laughs> You know, Drea's remarks saying that he might actually have a chance of winning if he makes it? I'm thinking that more and more lately. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> we just gotta see what happens, you know. So, starting out this episode, um, gradually, everyone that is in a real big position to be voted out, Romeo, Jonathan... Uh, um, Mike, albeit not as obviously, and then Drea, again, not super obviously, given the, um, people that were mentioned as, um, being, uh, with her or trying to make deals with her, so just, yeah, it's just real nice to see how everyone is being um, targeted there, and I gotta admit, though, that whole bit of... Everyone but Romeo and Marianne sitting on the beach and um, agreeing to take out those other two. I'm like, that is way too easy. These are all people from different dynamics and I just don't see that happening. Whereas the four people from the Orange Tribe sticking together, more and more that seems to be likely. Because you gotta remember, since they lost their one immunity challenge, because yeah, that... Orange Tribe, they only lost one challenge, really, because that very first challenge, should you really count that? I don't really think so. That challenge was more backdrop to secure the, uh, um, amulet being, um, handed out, which is now a hidden immunity idol that's in Lindsay's pocket. So now we have three idols... All of whom are actually in the Orange Team's pockets. So, <laughs> right. Especially since one of them is now guaranteed to make Final Free, although since Drea was voted out, now there's still three more people that can be voted out, and I'm down to two top picks. Whatever, though. If my streak ends up truly being interrupted now because I've officially nullified my the top picks that I did for Kagayan, we'll see. Either way, though, if there's a season for it to be interrupted, I'd say this is a, an appropriate season, given what Jeff stated. But it was nice to hear all the arguing to be going for everyone, except Omer, because he, to my knowledge, is the one person that hasn't had his name written down yet. Although I could be wrong on that, because did Lindsay get a vote? Don't remember. Whatever. Because Marianne did get a vote, I think, back when that shot... No, 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 she would have gotten the vote had the Shaun of the Dog thing not been out there, but the Shaun of the Dog was played, and then everyone voted for her. That's what I think happened. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So it's not corrected. He's the only guy that hasn't gotten his name written down yet. Um... Let's see, so there was that issue, and then we had, um, the reintroduction of Do or Die, which is to be expected because if they bring back the Hourglass twist, I should have expected them to do this again, and I'm not a big fan of this, like with the, um, Hourglass, because it's just against what the typical survivor elimination mechanism has been for all this time, even though it kind of makes sense that they change it at the same time, but just... You know, when you have such a traditional elimination mechanism, you just come to prefer it. It's like with Hell's Kitchen, where they introduce a couple of these you-need-to-cook-to-stay-alive challenges. I'm not the biggest fan of that. I prefer the traditional elimination mechanism. Yes, it does make it a tiny bit more boring, but it just feels more appropriate, honestly. Especially at the salon. Right. So, then, 
So then we get a reversal of last season, where, if I recall correctly, only two people set out of the immunity challenge. Here we only had two people competing. Uh, Jonathan versus Lindsay, and I was hoping that Lindsay would beat Jonathan, because Jonathan, given how he was on the chopping block legitimately... I'm like, if he's doing the do or die, then I'm actually okay with it either way. Whereas for Lindsay, given how she is not on the choppy block in any way, shape, or form, if she loses this immunity challenge, this has the potential to really disrupt the season. Nah. Now I know what you're thinking, but then Lindsay has immunity. She wasn't going to be voted out. It wasn't like, um, was his face to Sean from last? Season, he legitimately was on the chopping block, but then saved himself. Lindsay, 0% chance she would have been voted out. So, I didn't want her to go because that would really disrupt things. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yeah. But the fact that people sat out of the immunity challenge disrupted things. Would you argue that if they were offering food? I don't think so. Why? And you look at who was in, in in this cast. Jonathan beat Lindsay. He would have beaten Romeo. What if you ask me? He would have beaten Marianne if you ask me. And he probably would have beaten Omar. Huh? It's pretty reasonable that Jonathan wins this challenge anyway. Right. So, I actually don't think it was disrupted that much, to be honest with you. So then, before we get to Tribal, we have everyone going for their backup plan if Lindsay doesn't get um, eliminated. And then, Drea makes it clear that she's going to play her advantage. But then, she tells Omer, who then starts spelling the bees to the correct P ball. And... It puts him into a very brilliant situation where he's like, hey, wait a sec. If I could get Mike to give me his idol, because we all know that he has an idol, this not only uh, gives me the idol, it also wastes Drea's advantage, and I get rid of one of them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> just mad. This guy has just, oh, man. But what are they going to go to him? Although, Drea did kind of smell the beans that she told Omer, and it's because of her telling him that he does that, but Mike could have done the same thing, and who knows what Lin- Oh, but, but Lindsay told Omer and Mike about the, uh, her amulet, so, ooh, it's actually putting all of them, like, on even ground. This is going to be really interesting. Uh, even though I'm sure it's not going to be as highlighted in this presumably penultimate episode as I'm thinking it will be. But we'll see. We'll see. Penultimate episodes usually shake the game up a lot. Usually. Um, let's see here. Is there anything else to mention before the tribal comes? Um, Jonathan's, you know, I want to be like everyone else and not put the target on me. Well, that does kind of work in terms of the social and in camp life, but in the challenges, not so much. I mean, like, even when, um, a couple of individual immunities and you've come close a couple of other times, so, you know, although you have gotten farther than I thought. Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. Then, when um, uh, Lindsay's doing her do-or-die bits, and then High's telling her to always swap, um, dude, this isn't like Let's Make a Deal, especially now that I have seen a couple episodes of Let's Make a Deal, so I have a much better idea of what Diane Savant and Kevin Spacey are talking about in their respective um, areas where they discuss this, though, of course, Kevin Spacey, he's just acting out a role in a movie, whereas Diane Savant, she's actually analyzed this situation. Because the way it works in Let's Make a Deal is that you have three doors, each with a different prize, both in terms of what is behind there and how valuable the prize is. Uh, this, you have one good thing, and then you have two bad things that are completely identical. Look. 
So, no matter what, you are always going to leave at least one box behind that has a skull in it. By default, you always will. So, Jeff, unveiling the skull, yes, that improves the anonymous odds, but that's one thing that she didn't pick. So, in terms of the actual odds, it's not really changing anything. And he's going, you always swamp... Uh, you. The, it's the same variables, okay? Okay, whereas on Let's Make a Deal, when they always reveal one of the prizes that wasn't picked, they're never going to show the big prize because they want to keep that in contention. Nah. So if you've picked the second, the middle prize, or the lowest prize, they're going to reveal which one that you haven't picked. Nah. Picked. And then, if you pick the big prize, it makes a lot more sense for them to reveal the low prize, so that way you're actually a little more tempted to switch. Switch. So, the always swap bit, that doesn't really work. Yes, I'm sure that, um... Diane Savant really looked into that statistic, but if you look at what is actually revealed, if they open the third... I mean, the second... The, the prize in the middle, yeah, the prize in the middle, because there's no first, second, or third, because they're all good. If they open the middle prize in terms of value, that is when you should swap, if you ask me. And I'm not an average watcher of Let's Make a Deal. I just happen to have caught a couple of episodes on TV when I'm at work, and that is it. All right? right? But yeah, if they open the second middle one, you that's when you should swap. If they reveal the third, I say you should stay where you're at. Yeah. Although, get this. This time, I was like, well, they did number one last time. Granted, it's completely anonymous as to which one they have it in, but my thinking is Jeff is told to put the flame in a very specific position, and I'm sure that there is some indicator on the back of those things which one has it, but it's very subtle. You wouldn't notice it unless you were told that it was there. I highly doubt that it's completely random, although it might be, but... I was actually thinking, because they did one last time, I don't think they're going to do one this time. It's probably the middle one. Nah, just because. And sure enough, Lindsay and I picked the same thing. Interesting. So I was glad that um, she didn't get eliminated, because that would have really thrown off the game. And instead, what we did get, Drea being voted out, there was a very huge chance of that happening anyway. So, perfectly natural, unlike last time. Uh, which just again goes to show you that this season is way better than the last time. And the thing is, Rox Roy, he admitted in his interview, he legitimately considered not doing anything with the hourglass because he was thinking it all the way through. Yes, he chose to change fate, but it wasn't as obvious. Erica... Ka, I wouldn't be too surprised if she considered it, but I bet she considered it for just a few minutes and then smashed it. Rox Roy, I think it was more of... He waited a rather long time and then made what he felt was the correct decision in his mind. Duh. Right, but yeah, just... Hmm? The season is just way better than last season because of this cast. And even though we have had um, a lot of um, twists, and I think that they are being used more than last season and a tiny bit more effectively, it hasn't actually truly affected the game a huge amount. It's really just the hourglass, and again, as I everyone has said, and usually you are going to smash it, but if you do this enough times, there will be a time where they, it doesn't get smashed. But I'm sure that they're going to, um, twist it up a little bit more, because... Now... I think you know what I'm trying to get at here. I'm just stumbling over my own words, and I think I've dragged this video on, um, a bit long as it is. 
But still, grades moved by Omer again, although um, how much credit he's going to get for this, I don't know. We're going to have to see what happens here. Right. Hmm. Yeah, I think I've said all I need to. See ya.